Despite the incessant whining of billion-dollar mainstream media conglomerates who call President Trump's criticisms of their dishonest and censorious practices a war on the press, the banning and censorship of Alex Jones on Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify reveals that the real war on the press isn't being waged by the president. It is the media cartel who has declared war on the alternative media and anyone who would challenge this cartel's centralized control over the narrative. What we are seeing today, with four social media giants acting in unison to censor ideas which they find offensive, comes after weeks of pressure applied by the mainstream media giants. On July 11th, Facebook held a Q&A session in New York City, which they called Fighting Fake News at Facebook. And it was at this Q&A that CNN reporter Oliver Darcy asked the question which became the bludgeon that the mainstream media would use in the weeks between then and now. How can Facebook claim to be serious about tackling the problem of misinformation online while simultaneously allowing InfoWars to maintain a page with nearly 1 million followers on its website? Imagine if this very same question had been asked by Donald Trump with Infowars replaced by CNN. We would hear no end to the screams of censorship and violations of the freedom of press from the mainstream media. And yet, when it comes to an alternative media competitor with whom they disagree, the idea scarcely crosses their mind. What hypocrisy! But this is what many have come to expect from the likes of CNN, MSNBC, The Washington Post, and The New York Times. In the weeks since Oliver Darcy's question to Facebook, there has been no shortage of bad press laid at Facebook's feet, asking that same loaded question. To the mainstream media, headlines like these kill two birds with one stone. They put the screws to Facebook for not toting the party line, while serving as a blanket repudiation and mockery of a competitor who is able to consistently reach larger audiences than any one of these mainstream media giants are able to. And these audiences aren't stupid, as the media giants seem to believe. They know Alex Jones is a joke. The over-emotional and occasionally unhinged persona used by Jones has made him the subject of countless memes, remixes, and jokes, which he embraces wholeheartedly. But between bizarre conclusions to which he leaps regarding the Illuminati and slave colonies on Mars, there are tidbits of truth, and this is the true power of Alex Jones. He doesn't tell his audience what to think. He tells them what not to think and leaves it to them with just enough information to begin researching the subject on their own. But to the mainstream media cartel, Alex Jones isn't a joke. He's a threat. He's a threat to their control over the narrative and a threat to their advertisement cash cow. They don't care about his freedom of speech. They don't care about anyone's freedom of speech but their own. And they have proven over the last two years that they will shame, silence, and even dox anyone with whom they disagree. And there is nothing they won't do in their pursuit of narrative control. Let's not forget when CNN went to the home of an elderly Floridian woman and put her name and face out for the world to see, leading to massive harassment campaigns online against her just because CNN wanted to say her Facebook group was run by Russian bots. But it's not like Alex Jones holds a monopoly on conspiracy theories. The mainstream media themselves have for two years now touted the grand hoax of Russian collusion a story they know to be untrue, but use to maintain viewership. CNN, Washington Post, New York Times, you are all conspiracy theorists as well. 
You are just as quote unquote guilty of putting on a show using lies for the sake of ratings. But when a competitor that you don't like does it better than you, suddenly you're against it? Then why is CNN constantly like, Russia this, Russia that? Because it's ratings. Because it's ratings? Our ratings are incredible right now. But honestly, you'd, you'd think the whole Russia shit is just like bullshit. Could be bullshit. I mean, we, it's mostly bullshit right now. Like, we don't have any big giant proof. I just feel like they don't really have it, but they they want to keep digging. Mm -hmm. And so I think the president is probably right to say, like, look, you are witch hunting me. Like, you have no smoking gun. You have no real proof. And the CEO of CNN said in our internal meeting, he said, good job, everybody, covering the climate accords. But we're done with it. Let's get back to Russia. Companies like CNN are members of the press, but they are also corporations. And when corporations engage in anti-competitive behavior, it is the market and the people as a whole who suffer. And this is anti-competitive behavior. More than that, however, it is an abuse of their place within the press to push explicitly censorious and anti-free speech agendas which reinforce their place as the masters of the narrative, the people whose job it is to control what the American people and the people of the world think. Exactly, right. I, I, that is, that's exactly what I hear. What Yamish just said is what I hear from all the Trump supporters that I talk to who were Trump voters and are still Trump supporters, they go, yeah, you guys are going crazy. He's doing, what are you so surprised about? He's doing exactly what he said he's going to do. Well, and I think that the dangerous, you know, edges here are that he's trying to undermine the media, trying to make up his own facts. And it could be that while unemployment and uh, the, the economy worsens, he could have undermined the messaging so much that he can actually control right. uh, exactly what people think. And that if, is the that is our you, job. Yeah. If you look at that is our you, job. Yeah. If, that is your job. Yeah. This media cartel doesn't care about serving the public by acting as a check to political power. While there might be journalists within their massive conglomerates which do, they are but the voice of a tiny mouse in comparison to the booming echo of the voices of six corporations which control 90% of all media in the world. GE, News Corp, Disney, Viacom, Time Warner, and CBS. These six companies have no interest in sharing the freedom of speech, which has granted them immense wealth through advertising and entertainment. And when one of them wants a message pushed, the cartels agree to do the same, or at least not stand to contradict, in their pact of anti-competitiveness. The message is delivered from the top, and soon every media outlet is parroting exactly the same words. Our, our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to, to serve, serve our, our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso, Las Cruces communities. Eastern Iowa communities. Mid-Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we, we are concerned, concerned about troubling trying to be responsible, one-sided one news stories, plaguing our country. country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same things that are true without checking facts first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is a war on the truly free press, the alternative media, the citizen journalists and activists who do wish to act as a check and balance to the government and the companies which manipulate that government alike. You, 
like me, every citizen in this nation has been reduced to a product to be sold by these media giants to advertisers. The media cartel will stop at nothing to see those who disagree with their narrative banned, shadow banned, censored and pushed out in order to maintain the wealth they have created for themselves. A wealth built on the utter destruction of freedom of speech and the concept of a fourth estate. And the social media giants will bow to their wishes or they will be attacked by the cartel, both through hit pieces in their publications and through the stock market in coordinated sell-offs which precede the publishing of those hit pieces. Unless, of course, we the people stand to stop them. To break the yoke, we must all stop feeding into their system. Never visit a mainstream news site directly. Instead, copy the link and put it into archive.is or archive.fo and only share the archived link. Enable ad blocking and use browser plugins like Ghostery and Privacy Badger to prevent them from gathering data about you, which they can sell to third parties. Unsubscribe from their newspapers and websites and social media accounts and instead support the little guys the independent journalists, the activists and content creators you know you can trust. Hit the cartel where it hurts the most, their wallets. Only then will they have to consider the lies, the collusion, and the censorship. Either they will, and they're through as a company, they'll survive, or they won't, and they're through, they will be regulated to the trash heap of history, like so many others.